Okay, so this right here is my uh, 2018 Honda Grom. I've had it for a couple years now, put about 900 some miles on it, and I do stuff with it. One of those things I do with it is take it off road. And I kind of want to add some fog lights to it because I've noticed, especially while riding at night, there is almost no visibility on like the higher plane of when you look at the light or off to the sides, uh, making it kind of dangerous to ride off road at speed, even though I don't go that fast. Now, a while ago, I found these lights at Ross for 15 bucks, and they seem like pretty quality lights, right? Box is pretty torn up because it's been sitting in my garage for a minute, but like, I'm thinking of putting these on the the uh, the ground. Thing is, I don't know where to mount them completely. I'm either thinking right here on the side but I also want to keep them in a spot where they won't get damaged when I eventually go down so probably like maybe back here then so I'm gonna start taking some parts off the Grom and uh, see where I want to put them luckily I already have the switches and relays and everything for the for the fog lights because I'm doing the sob fog lights too so I want to open up this box see if it comes with any cool brackets or whatever to hold it in there's that I guess it had some brackets on it so it's not going to be too hard to do. It's all held together with Allen keys and stuff. Maybe you're just right here, underneath? I must have spent more money on the, the battery pack for the display than anything else. So I guess these are the brackets here. Uh, nope. Maybe here? Nope. This is the part that attaches to the light itself. And this is the part that gets screwed in. Now, upon turning the handlebars to full lock, I realized I definitely cannot mount them here. So that's out of the question. I was thinking about taking off these turn signals and mounting them there. But that's also a bad idea. So then, I guess the only real place to do it is either on here or on the side of the front fender. But then, like, everything is plastic. I really want to, like, anchor it to, like, some kind of solid metal. But there's not a single piece of metal on this bike that's accessible from outside. Everything is plastic even this whole this whole section is plastic feel that see that wiggle so I ended up having a good long talk with my friend and he suggested getting these handlebar mounts and mounting it to the actual fork tubes so I went on Amazon found them for like $14 order them and about two days later they were here and it, it was actually a really good idea it's much better to mount them onto a solid fork tube than all this plastic stuff on this bike thank you Steven Okay, so now I have the brackets. It's been a couple days since that last video, but these are the brackets going to go uh, on the actual handlebar assembly. I've got the right rubber size that will fit my fork tubes and then have the two screws grow in there. So this uh, fog light or driving light is actually just one or two different lights. So I gotta take out these two, four bolts here, split them up, and then I'm gonna screw it into the bracket on the side. I'm hoping that single bracket is strong enough to hold up one unit off-road. So I'm just going to lock tight it down here because I can't put a lock wash on there. This bolt isn't really long enough for that. But once that's all done, let's see how it does. So here's the mounting bracket for each side. You can see it's mounted right on the bottom, just like so. It does allow me to adjust it later on. And these aren't tight either. I'm going to set it up on the bike. And then, uh, yeah, see how it goes. Okay, so I got the lights hooked up right there. And... Uh, thing is it hits so I got in the bike pushed it, the front fork all the way down and you can just hear it just go <laughs> towards that so I got to put it to the outside and try not to go down oh well no big deal but it does look sick like that though I and mean, it even matches the forks and everything it's so stealth looks kind of mean too Okay, so now I'm in the process of remounting this fork, and there's a few different ways to do it. Probably the easiest being like that. But I really don't want to mount it where it's too obvious looking, so I'm thinking of just going like that, and then just spinning it around. Just like that. So I, I want to tuck everything in as much as possible. I'm going to pop it in there, check the clearances, make sure nothing hits. I still like it better underneath the headlight, but... I guess this is the best option for now. Okay, so this is the current setup. It's also not going to work because I can't get full lock on steering and uh, clear the mudguard hitting problem well enough. So I'm going to have to swing these around, put them up right up against here, and have them protruding forward. 
Honestly, I think that'll look better because right now it just looks a little weird. Okay, so this right here is the fifth or sixth try, I think, to get it to fit right. And I think I finally got it. So I was able to move the bracket a little bit higher up. It does barely, barely clear this whole rotating assembly. And actually, if you look closely, it does hit right there. You can hear it. But it also clears right here. So there's a little bit, there's just enough space. But I'm going to set this up over here, try and bottom out the front suspension. See if it makes the same noise of hitting this, which I think it might, but I hope not, and we'll see. I'm hoping that this is the solution right here, this whole setup. Okay, so this right here is the final solution. You can go lock to lock without any major rubbing. Just rubbing a bit more on that side than it is on this side. But you can see it's a tiny amount of rub. But here it's much less. Maybe I need to lower that one just a little bit. But overall, uh, I can bottom out the suspension. It doesn't hit the fender. And I think this is going to be the final config. Now all I got to do is put the switch on the handlebars and route the power from the battery. Okay, so here's the light switch itself. That's going to go right on here with the handlebar. But one thing that kind of threw me off is that this switch has uh, three wires rather than two. So I gotta figure out what these three wires are and then I'm gonna probably put the relay behind the headlight and just route two wires from the battery that'll be power and ground up to here and I should have the lights working by the end of the night. Actually, I really do like the switch. It looks almost original too. Well, not really, but like, I don't know. It doesn't look too aftermarket, you know? It has a solid clicky feel. Okay, so step one in getting this thing wired up is gonna be pulling the seat off which is done by the key right here. Okay, there's that. So I'm gonna be using this black wire for the negative, as you can probably guess, and this green wire for the positive. All I need to do is tap in right here, I'm go underneath this plastic fairing. I'm gonna try and come out right over here so I can have all the major wiring up here. I don't wanna try running relays and wiring back here just to try and clean up this whole thing. I'm going to try and do it without taking it off but we'll see. And this is a fuel pump cover. Oy. Pepper calm down doggy. So it's going to be a little bit too difficult to uh, route these wires without pulling out this little side fairing. Okay so just a quick little trick. I uh, uh, twisted this wire. I'm going to hook it onto this uh, Ryobi edge trimmer element filament thing which is incidentally almost the same color as the bike <laughs> and I'm going to just drag it through and use it to pull the wire out because I ran it in from the front of the bike right there I'll pull it all the way out through there and that should hopefully take the wires to where they where I want them to go okay so there you can see the green and black wires starting under the seat and here I have them at the handlebars now one thing to remember when wiring up stuff on a motorcycle is that the fact that th this whole handlebar assembly turns. So you want to have some extra space in this wire so it doesn't get pinched or pulled causing it to break. So what you want to do is just wrap it around here I'm going to bring everything right over here and do the wiring right here. Okay so what I have right here is my relay. Now it's a nylite relay but it should be relatively universal for all 5 pin relays. One thing you need to remember is that this center red wire or this uh, center wire or center pin we're not going to be using this. Well I'm not going to be using this. Uh, this blue wire is going to be the positive, weird. Black wire is the ground, that makes sense. And I believe this yellow wire is going to be the power going to the actual light assembly. This white wire is going to be the trigger. So. Step one is going to be to route power from this green wire to both the blue wire on the relay and the wire on the switch. The problem is I still don't know which wire on the switch should be getting power. This particular switch has three wires, one black and white wire, one brown wire, and one black wire. 
Normally, a switch is just completing a circuit, so there should only be two wires. So I don't know why this one has three. So to secure this, this relay into place, I've uh, found a little metal rod that I can uh, zip tie it to, and I find a little, another little metal piece right there to zip tie it to. Just gonna pop it there and hold it nice and tight in place. Now I tried a preliminary little turn test, and it shouldn't cause any issues. Uh, but I'm gonna double check real quick. Just to go over the wiring real quick, the green wire right here is my power wire. Now the power wire is connected to two things. One, it's connected to the blue wire on the relay, and it's also connected to the switch. The yellow wire on this relay is connected directly to the positive of the actual light or the accessory. The red wire, I'm not using. The white wire gets power from the switch. So when the switch is turned on, it sends power to the white wire, and that's what trips the relay and causes the switch inside the relay to close, turn the lights on. And the ground wire is obviously connected to the ground. Now, in terms of things you need to ground, you need to ground the light, and you need to ground the relay. You need to give power to the relay and to the switch, not to the light. So I'm going to tape these up. Everything's soldered. Everything works fine. And I'm just going to take the tape it up, pop the wires inside of it, or behind the headlight housing here. Kind of want to maybe, maybe trim the wires up and make it look a little bit nicer. But who knows? Anyway, there should be enough space to pop, like just stuff everything in there. And once that's done, I'll take it out tonight and see if I can get some good shots with it. I am still waiting to get inline fuse. You should always run a fuse whenever you install anything like this. And the switch itself is running pretty good too. But right now I just have the power disconnected. I'll have a fuse in about a few days, but I just want to test it out now so I can get the video out and show people the stuff that I do. But yeah, all in all, pretty simple project. Wiring did take a while, especially to route this wire all the way back there. I want to get some. Uh, hose on it to cover it up and hopefully get this thing going off road again I know we're running out of time it's like 8 a.m. in the morning it's already like 80 degrees yay living in the desert I should get some lewd anime stickers on here okay so I did end up actually cutting up all these wires and shortening them I'm gonna put some electrical tape on this connection right here and stick everything behind the headlight and I'm gonna call it a day I'm going to get some conduit to cover these wires, but that will be later on. Probably zip tie them against this uh, main loom as well. Okay, so here's the end product. You can see the zip ties are nice and tight in. And overall, it's pretty stealth. Like, I'm going to get some uh, conduit to hide these wires here. Then we'll zip tie them to this main loom. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Like, if you're not looking for it, you definitely wouldn't be able to tell. And I've also zip tied these so they're nice and secure here. These are a little dangly, but they're not too bad. If you look at the bike from the front, again, you really don't notice the extra wires. Even from the side, you don't really notice them. Come over here, same as well, nothing. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna probably get it ready and take it out in a couple hours. When it gets darker and uh, get some shots of it, see how it does. I might need to readjust these lights the way they're pointing, but overall, that's pretty good to me. Okay, so it's now time to test out the lights. Okay, so here we are, pretty much at the edge of the city. Uh, you can see the mountains and stuff over there. I am under a street light. Uh, that is because I don't want to be eaten by a coyote, because that tends to happen and stuff like that. Grant the diamond fairly big and scary looking dude, but I'm on a very tiny small motorcycle. Anyway, so this is low beam, right? There's high beam, and then uh, here's the actual off-road lights. I mean, they make a difference, but not much of a difference, I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, I think high beam probably makes more of a difference, to be honest. But again, that could also be the fact that they're aimed so badly. What if I turn off the bike and just have the off-road lights on? 
So yeah, there's the off-road lights. Really not that bright, holy I mean, they do their job and they light stuff up, but they're definitely not that bright. It's, I mean, at least they create a nice little hot spot. Well, no, they do. If you look around the edges, they do add some more light around there, towards the sides. I mean, there is a difference. It's just not as bright as I thought it would be. Hold on, let me get off the bike and take a look at it. Please don't let me get eaten. Please don't let me get eaten. Please don't let me get eaten. It does look kind of cool. You can tell the beam pattern is... Ooh, okay. See, the beam pattern is definitely more of a full, like, flood-type beam. So I'm gonna guess it is gonna be a more... Okay, I need to aim these correctly. I think once I aim them... Yeah, you can see this. I think the real problem is the way it's aimed. Just tilt them down a bit more. Should be a lot better. But, I don't know. I'm, I'm not completely satisfied, but I'm not completely disappointed either. Okay, yeah, so there is definitely a difference, right? So low beam, high beam, off-road light. Okay, I'm satisfied now. This is a throttle absolutely pinned going uphill on a grove. 45 mile an hour, baby. Every time I drop into my top gear, my speed goes down. So the difference is actually pretty noticeable when you're not under a street light. I am actually really satisfied now with this little mod. I just wonder how it's, how my battery is taking it, because I know this bike doesn't put out much voltage. These lights are not as bright as the OEM lights, but they definitely fill in the spots where the OEM lights are lacking. And for that, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Well, if you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more stuff, probably not me complaining on a motorcycle, but maybe badass manly stuff with like car modifying, racing, really danking and that kind of stuff hit subscribe and do whatever else you do on the internet except simp remember never simp <laughs>